It's no secret that backpacking gear is expensive. Often, most of the time, I would say those high prices are worth it. They're justified. They're high for a reason. But is that always the case? These are three overpriced types of backpacking gear for budget backpackers like myself. What's going on everybody? My name is Kyle O'Grady. I'm a thru-hiker, I'm a peak bagger. I'm just a big hiking nerd. If you yourself are a hiking nerd, I encourage you to very gently tap that subscribe button. You don't wanna to be too aggressive and accidentally smash it. Actually, who am I kidding? You can go ahead and smash that all you want, and while you're at it, smash that like button too. Like I said a few seconds ago, most of the steep prices that come attached to backpacking gear are justified. There's a reason these items are expensive, they're high quality stuff, and they're gonna really save your ass potentially while you're on the trail. However, over the years, I've kind of identified three areas of backpacking gear that you don't necessarily have to pay a steep price for to get a high quality product. Now, if you're not on a budget and you can afford to just kind of throw around money when it comes to backpacking gear, then shit, maybe you wanna get the more expensive items here. However, if you're like me and you're on a budget, you're not trying to spend a lot of money, I do think that the items I'm about to talk about are gonna give you way more bang for your buck than their more expensive counterparts. And with that said, let's talk about some rain jackets. So just to get a normal idea of how much rain jackets are currently going for, let's look it up on REI. So we got here, you know, 40 to 50 bucks here, 90 bucks, 90 bucks, 119 bucks. That one's on sale for only $95. That's just great. Another popular one is the Outdoor Research Helium Jacket. Look at this, $145. I mean, you get that free shipping though, but I mean, come on, 100, 160 for the women's version. That's just ridiculous. There's absolutely no reason to pay that much for a freaking rain jacket. So what I'm gonna show you here is called the Frog Togs rain jacket. It's the Ultralight 2, and look at that. Not even $18 on Amazon. You got that Prime so you know it's free. We got a couple other variations here, all under $30 and like I said the ultralight 2 which is the most common one That's the one that I used on the Appalachian Trail under $20. Look at that. You could even check out the Frog Togs ultralight 2 poncho Which is a little bit different than the rain jacket because I mean obviously it's just a poncho And I actually bought one of these babies by accident because I thought it was the regular rain jacket But turns out it was actually the poncho, but I mean look at that Look how look how much fun she's having right there Look at this guy, he's going out, he's on the trail, he's got his fishing pole, he's having a good time. 4.3 out of 5 stars, that's not too bad. Let's read some of these reviews. This guy says it's waterproof, kept my backpack and me dry even in torrential rain. Stop looking, buy this one. Folks, you know these Amazon reviews are the truth. You're not allowed to lie in Amazon reviews, so trust me, this is, this is definitely proving my point, isn't it? I know that some of you might be hesitant to believe that a $13 poncho could actually keep somebody dry. So let's investigate. I used frog togs for my entire Appalachian Trail through hike. I carried them for over 2,000 miles, strapped onto a backpack that was constantly brushing up against trees and branches, was constantly facing all sorts of abuse, and they held up. They honestly did. Sure, I probably had a couple little rips and holes by the end of the trail, but I mean, for less than 20 bucks, sh I'll take it. Often when you buy cheaper gear, it comes at the expense of weight. So the cheaper it is, the heavier it's gonna be, but that's not the case with frog togs at all. In fact, my pair of frog togs weighed less than six ounces, which is about as light as any rain jacket's gonna be. And again, it's $20. But if you're still unconvinced about the frog togs, just look how stylish these things are. I mean, come on. So the second overpriced type of backpacking gear is gonna be stoves. Now, fortunately, it seems like people are starting to kinda come around on this one, but for a while, I would always see super expensive backpacking stoves being recommended, and I just feel like that's kind of bullshit because there's so many cheap alternatives on the internet that you can buy. So let's just go check out a totally 
random backpacking stove here. Oh, look at that, sixty-five dollars, and it does not include <laughs> it does not include the fuel canister. I mean, come on, two cups of water in under two and a half minutes in strong winds and gusty weather. That's cool and all, but I mean, look at that. That's 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 just too expensive. Let's go see what REI has here for backpacking stoves. We got the Pocket Rocket 2 here. I mean, it's a little bit cheaper, but over $30 just for a stove. Look at that. 100 bucks for the jet boil. I know that comes with the the pot and everything too, but stove kits. Oh, look at this, the Pocket Rocket Deluxe stove. That's even better than this one somehow they charge even more money for it let's see if we can find something cheaper so I'm gonna type in backpacking stove and look at that $14 for this little guy the eTechCity <laughs> eTechCity ultralight portable outdoor backpacking camping stove blah 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 this one's that's too expensive look at this under $10 for a backpacking stove now you might be like, Kyle, that's got to be like a total piece of shit, right? There's no way that anybody can actually use these. And you are wrong. I have not personally used every single one of these stoves. However, I saw lots of people on my Appalachian Trail through hike that just use these cheap like Amazon stoves and they work. It's the truth. They work. I mean, look at this thing. Four and a half star rating. Let's go down here and check out some of these reviews. Perfect. As good as stoves that cost much more, which is the exact point of this video. So thank you very much, Darian, for leaving that review. And look, David C says, this stove surpassed all expectations. My point here is pretty simple, folks. You don't have to buy one of these super, super expensive stoves when you have these cheap alternatives. Now, if you have any like unique backpacking food needs, or you just like to make like some crazy shit on the trail, then yeah, maybe these stoves won't work for you. But if you're just a normal backpacker like me, who's just gonna be making like standard hiking food, you know, maybe some Nor pasta sides or instant mashed potatoes, maybe some mountain house meals if you feel like splurging, which does not make any sense because this is a budget video. These cheap stoves should be just fine. There's really no need to spend over $50 on a freaking backpacking stove. So the third overpriced type of backpacking gear is actually gonna be hiking and backpacking clothing. This one still blows my mind, honestly. It absolutely kills me <laughs> that people are willing to spend huge amounts of money on clothes that they're just gonna hike in and get all and stinky and sweaty and smelly. Now I feel like the through hikers and the hiker trash folks have kind of figured this one out already, but I still do see a lot of normal backpackers and hikers spending like tons and tons of money on hiking clothes and I just think that's a waste. So we're back at our favorite place to buy expensive overpriced hiking gear, REI. So actually let's go and let's see what we have going on for hiking clothing, what we're gonna get for prices here. So, okay, look at that. Close to $50 for a pair of pants, $60 for a pair of pants, 35 bucks for a long sleeve shirt that you're just gonna end up destroying with sweat and grossness while you're on trail. This one's, yeah, again, 30 to $40 just for a freaking short sleeve t-shirt. Absolutely freaking ridiculous. A hundred bucks for these pants. I mean, $30 belt, like, I don't even know. These things are 35 to $50 and they don't even look good. Like, I, I, I just don't get it, folks. $65 for a pair of freaking short shorts. That's absolute nonsense. Folks, really all you're gonna need are some short shorts for men. Let's take a look at these. Now this is, ooh, look at that. <laughs> now obviously this is like kind of a joke, but I mean, again, I just feel like you could find something like this, like that's under 20 bucks. That's not too bad. Or something super stylish like this. I mean, men's authentic ranger panty. <laughs> look, you could, <laughs> that's, this is absolutely not what the point of this video is. Now, I know that some people will buy clothes for hiking and then also use it for like, you know, just everyday wearing, you know, normal, normal people clothes, I guess. And if that's the case, then fine. But if you're buying clothes just to go hiking, I really don't see the freaking point in spending a hundred dollars on a pair of Merino base layer bottoms like oh my god that's just ridiculous i'm not really a experienced winter hiker so i'm not talking about winter here i'm, I'm mostly talking about 
you know, spring, summer, fall, the three season type of deal. If some expensive piece of clothing is just so comfortable for you that you absolutely need it, then I'm not gonna tell you not to get it. All I'm saying is that if you're looking to save money, there's really no reason to spend a large amount of your budget on clothing. You're just gonna get all stinky and sweaty. Hopefully you found this stuff helpful. Make sure you hit subscribe if you want to see more backpacking, hiking, through hiking related content and shitty jokes. And be sure to check out my podcast Trail Tales if you want to hear some in-depth, long-form conversations between experienced hikers. That's it. Have a good one, folks.